human knowledge has expanded significantly over time. In ancient times, learned scientific understanding led to everyday phenomena being misinterpreted as mystical or otherworldly. Questions like, is the moon a deity, or are shadows creatures of darkness, sparked the imagination. Such misunderstandings fueled the creation of various folklores, leading our ancestors to erroneously believe in the existence of bizarre and terrifying creatures. Here, we explore creatures that were once thought to be real by humans. Number 7. The Vegetable Lamb of Tartary In the past, when people didn't know something, they would often make things up instead of admitting they didn't know. This resulted in many books filled with mistruths and lies. One example of this is the misconceptions about the cotton plant. A cotton plant has leaves at its base and a long stem with a ball on top called a lamb. Europeans in the Middle Ages knew that cotton came from India, but they didn't understand how it grew. Instead of finding out, they made up stories about it. In the 19th century, naturalist Henry Lee wrote a 60-page thesis called Thesis on the Lamb's History based on these misconceptions. He claimed that for around three centuries, people thought these theories were factual and no one questioned them. But the truth is, it was all just a made-up story about a plant that nobody knew anything about. The man responsible for these weird and wacky theories about cotton was Sir John Mandeville, a famous traveler in the 1300s who enjoyed fabricating his travels. His lies and stretched truths led to many misconceptions about places and experiences in England. For instance, he wrote that cotton grew in Tartary, which is now Russia and Mongolia, and produced gourds with tiny lambs on them that men could eat. He claimed that these lambs would sit on the plant and bend down to graze the land around it. Once the lamb ran out of grazing pasture, it would die. This theory was accepted until the 1600s. Thankfully today, we have access to accurate information and do not need to rely on made-up stories or lies to understand the world around us. Number 6. The Bonacon The way the Bonacon is written about in ancient literature, you would think the authors are talking about a simple woodland critter. It's almost as if the Bonacon, a strange beast from the ancient world, really did exist, even though there's no proof to say it did. It was first mentioned and possibly traced back to a Roman natural historian by the name of Pliny the Elder. Pliny the Elder said the creature also went by the name of Bonicus, Bonican, Bonicus, and similar, and existed in Paonia. In today's world, that would be Western Bulgaria and Northern Greece. Pliny said the Bonicon had a mane like a horse, but inward facing horns like that of a bull. Such was the bull horn's angle that they served no attack or defensive purposes. How it did defend itself is far more unique and a bit gross. The horse-like creature would expel excrement around 100 feet in the direction of its enemy upon hitting the target, it would start to burn. Such information was mentioned in a piece of writing often attributed to Aristotle, called On Marvelous Things Heard. Within this context, it was also noted that the excrement would only burn when it was destined for an enemy. The creature was pitch black with sweet flesh, and it made its way into many medieval collections of biographies over the years. No one knows for sure where this creature came from, but it seems to pop up in random ancient literature far too often for it to be a coincidence. Number 5. The Aspidocolone We know that in our generation we have many storytellers. We also know that the difference between reality and fiction is clear to us. Thanks to the internet, we are able to differentiate between truth and falsehood. However, in the past, this was not the case. In ancient Greece, people believed in the existence of a dangerous sea creature called the Aspidocolone, also known as the Asp Turtle. It was set to eat sailors, destroy ships, and even disguise itself as an island to trick people into walking on it. Christian texts from the 2nd century AD also described it as a giant whale or sea turtle with spines on the ridges of its back and a rock-like appearance. Other texts claimed that it emitted a sweet odor to attract fish and had a body equal to that of a mountain. Nowadays, we know that these stories and descriptions were probably exaggerated or misunderstood. What people most likely saw were whales, not monsters. Now it's time for the odd topic. There are some parts of the world that once upon a time believed in the legend of absurdly long horses. Yeah, really. The stories claimed that hiding out in the forests and woods were horses far different to the ones we know. Horses that could almost be described as the limousine of the equine world, able to carry whole families at once. 
people became obsessed with trying to track down and even breed these legendary horses. Hundreds of years later and no actual example was ever found. Quite why people came to believe this we may never know. As always, comment down below with the hashtag odd topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. Let's move on to the next one. Number 4. The Payasa Bird. Elton is a charming township that has gained notoriety for its fascinating bird that was believed to exist by humans. The bird, known as the Piazza bird, is believed to be a combination of a mythical legend and a lie told by an antiquarian named John Russell. According to local historian Don Huber, the legend of the Piazza bird is one that he often receives calls about. The legend describes a bird-like monster called Piazza, which means devours men in the Illini Indian language. According to the legend, the bird was able to carry off animals as large as a full-sized deer, but its favorite prey was humans. Paintings of the Piazza bird were once found on the bluffs along the Mississippi River, but they likely eroded away along with the rock bluffs by the time Americans arrived. However, the Americans picked up the story and ran with it. In 1836, John Russell claimed that the creature was defeated by Indian chief Witoga. He used himself as bait to bring it to hidden warriors who attacked it with poisoned arrows. It then flung itself off the bluff into the Mississippi River. However, John later admitted that he had made the whole thing up and that it never related to Native American legends at all. Despite this, the Piazza bird is what Alton is known for. It serves as the local high school's mascot, and in 1998, the American Legends Society even repainted the bird on the limestone bluffs in Alton. Well played, Alton. Well played. Number 3. The Ahutzotl. Those who want to find out Aztec ancient customs before Mexico's conquest need only look in the Florentine Codex, a manuscript put together during the 16th century by Nahuas. The manuscript offers not only glimpses into Aztec history and religion, but even information on flora and fauna, while many of these references are easy to follow, understand, and relate to modern-day examples, the Ahuizotl is not one of them. As the story goes, the Ahuizotl lived in the rivers and lakes surrounding Tinachitlan. If a fisherman ventured too far into the water, they were likely to meet their watery demise. They would be pulled into the water, drowned, and their eyes, teeth, and nails would be removed. The Ahuizotl was described as having small and pointy ears, short fur, a smooth body, and a black tail with a human-like hand on the end. Anyone who drowned in waters near Tanachitlan, supposedly at the hand of the Ahuizotl, could only be pulled out by priests of the Tlaloc. Back then, the Aztecs believed that drowning would offer them a place in Tlaclone, an earthly paradise, and home to Tlaloc, a water god. Definitely nailing these Aztec words. Ever since reading about Or, Zodal researchers have been trying to find a modern-day example of such a creature, but they keep coming up empty-handed. Everything from beavers to otters has been considered, but none matched the written description. Therefore, we can only assume that the Orzodal is a creature people thought, never did. Number 2. The Kappa. The Kappa is Japan's version of Bigfoot. While there have been sightings, no one knows for sure if it exists. It's possible that some sightings could have been of other creatures like monkeys. According to the story, Kappas are water imps that reside in the rivers and lakes of Japan, there is a popular belief that the Tono Valley is where the majority of the Kappas live or are spotted. These creatures are known to have complex personalities. They can be harmful, aggressive, and deadly, but they can also heal, set bones, and provide medical services for the sick. Interestingly, they seem to have a fondness for cucumbers and would go to great lengths to obtain them. Those who claim to have seen Kappas claim that they are around the size of a 6- to 10-year-old child. They appear to be a cross between a lizard, turtle, and monkey and have a bowl on their head. While descriptions may vary depending on the part of Japan, the most consistent story is that of the bowl. The bowl supposedly contains liquid that offers supernatural strength. You can deplete the kappa's strength by encouraging it to bow and subsequently empty the bowl. Sightings of kappa, like Bigfoot, are still reported to this day, but there is yet to be any solid proof that they exist. Number 1. The Nian. Millions of people celebrate the Chinese New Year, or Spring Festival, every year. They let off fireworks, light candles, burn bamboo, and paste red spring couplets, 
But did you know that the tradition is based on a monster called Nian that all villagers feared? The Chinese legend is that Nian, a monster in the sea with horns and sharp teeth, would crawl out of the water at the end of the lunar year in search of livestock and people to attack and eat. As a result of Nian's annual tradition, villagers would head for the mountains to keep themselves safe before New Year's Eve. One year, as everyone prepared to leave, a beggar in rags with a walking stick arrived in the village looking for refuge. An elderly woman gave him food and told him to go with everyone else. He wouldn't but promised to get rid of the beast if she let him stay in her house for one night hesitantly. She agreed and left with the others when Nian arrived in the town. It was dark and dead except for one house. The old woman's when the monster approached it all the windows had red paper pasted over them and the home was illuminated by candlelight. The monster was enraged but before it had a chance to act it heard a loud crack and the man came out wearing a red gown and laughing almost maniacally out of fear, Nyan fled into the night. When the villagers returned, they were surprised by the lack of carnage and flocked to the old woman's house. They saw candles, unburnt bamboo in the backyard and red paper on the windows and doors. They thought this was the recipe for keeping Nyan away. Therefore, the Chinese New Year always incorporates red paper, candles, fireworks and similar, and people stay up to celebrate the monster's disappearance rather than fleeing to the mountains. The festival also goes by the name of Gonian, which translates to surviving the Nian's attack. There is often enough evidence to suggest that certain creatures do not exist, but do you believe that there could be evidence to suggest that some of them did exist? Additionally, Take a look at the other interesting content that is currently appearing on your screen. See you next time.